In this video, I'll show you the best way to invest in Australian shares if you're a beginner. I'll also explain how the Australian stock market works in a simple and easy format. I feel like new investors get so intimidated that they imagine the stock market to be this over elaborate scheme that only the rich and super smart people can be a part of, when in reality, it's really simple to understand and to get started. Honestly, anyone could do it. So what you'll gain from this video is a simplified explanation of how the Australian stock market works, how you actually make money in the stock market, some key things you should know, and what you should do before investing. So if you're a beginner who's been thinking about investing in the Australian stock market, then you've come to the right place, my friend. By the end of the video, you will have enough information to decide for yourself if you are ready to start investing and sign up for your very first online stock brokerage account. As always, I'll leave timestamps down below, so feel free to skip to any sections you are interested in. So if that sounds good to you, let's get started. We will begin with the age-old question, what is the stock market? Well, simply put, the stock market is a place you can buy and sell shares of a publicly listed company. In Australia, this place is called the Australian Securities Exchange or the ASX for short. This is a place Australian investors go to buy and sell Australian shares. So unlike other countries like the United States that have multiple exchanges, Australia only has one and that is the ASX. You should be familiar with companies like Commonwealth Bank, Woolworths, JB Hi-Fi and Telstra. These are all publicly listed companies that are listed on the ASX. The fact that they are publicly listed companies means they are offering you an opportunity to buy shares of their company and make you become part owner of the company on paper. Now obviously, this does not mean if you own shares of Woolworths, you can go into their grocery stores and help yourself with some free bananas whenever you feel like it. But it does mean if Woolworths does well during the year, meaning they sell a lot of groceries and make a lot of profits, then you will directly benefit from it. Because you are a shareholder and therefore a part owner of the company. Now the good news is, you do not have to manage the shares that you own. You are simply an owner and you put your trust in the management team to deliver good results for the company. Your job is just to hold the shares and hopefully over time, if you picked a good business, the share price will increase in value. Which brings me to another popular question, which is how do you make money in the stock market? Well, there are two ways you can make money from the stock market. The first way is for the share price to go up in value. This is usually how most people expect to make money on their shares. So say you bought 50 shares of CBA stock at $100 each, it will be worth $5,000. Then let's say we fast forward six months into the future and each share of CBA is now worth $120. This means your 50 shares of CBA stock is now worth $6,000 and you've basically made a profit of $1,000. Until you sell this, we'll call this an unrealized gain. If you decide to sell it, then you would make $1,000 in profit minus brokerage fees. Of course, then you'll have to pay taxes on this profit, but to keep this video simple, let's just forget about taxes for now. If you do want to learn more about how you can save taxes from investing, then I'll leave a link to a video below. Now you may be thinking, how and why do share prices go up? To answer this question, you should know that all public companies listed on the ASX must report their financial results to shareholders at least twice a year. Half year results are usually released in February and full year results are usually released in August. Just remember that the Australian financial year starts in July and ends in June. So if a company reports good earnings and profits, then more investors will start buying the stock which will increase the share price. If a stock looks more attractive, then there will be more buyers than sellers which creates upward pressure on the stock to go up in price. It is simple economics. If demand is higher than supply, the asset will increase in value and that's how it works for the share price. The second way for you to make money in the stock market is for the company to pay you dividends for investing in their stock. In this case, a dividend is a cash reward paid to shareholders from a company as a thank you for investing in their stock. The money is usually paid out from the company's net profits. For example, let's say Woolworths performs really well and makes a big profit for the year. They are likely to use some of it to pay dividends directly to the shareholders' bank accounts. Let's take a look at Woolworths dividends history. As you can see, they recently paid a dividend on the 3rd of May 2022 at 30 cents per share. This means if you owned 100 Woolworths shares, you would be paid $39 for pretty much doing nothing but owning the shares. Pretty sweet deal, right? Also, Australian companies generally pay dividends twice a year, as you can see here where Woolworths. Generally speaking, companies that pay dividends are well-established companies with predictable yearly revenue. In Australia, big banks like Commonwealth and Westpac and big supermarkets like Woolworths and Coles are famous for paying dividends because they usually make profits every year. Traditionally, Australian stocks pay dividends twice a year. However, please note that dividends are not guaranteed and no company is legally required to pay dividends. Sometimes a company won't meet their profit numbers due to a global economic situation which is affecting their business. A perfect example of this is during the pandemic in 2020 when the big four Australian banks all announced they were not going to pay dividends for the year. However, this was a once in a lifetime health event and generally speaking, the top Australian companies have a great track record of paying consistent dividends to their shareholders. Okay, so now that you know how stocks make money, your next question is probably, what stocks do I invest in? There are usually two ways to invest invest in the stock market. Either you can invest in individual companies or you can invest into something called index funds. An individual company is what most of the stocks on the ASX consists of. So that includes companies like BHP, CBA and Coles. While investing in individual companies can be more profitable, it also carries more risk since it's a single company and if something goes wrong then you could potentially lose all your money. An index fund is a mutual fund or ETF whose portfolio attempts to mirror that of a designated index aiming to match its performance. Australia's most well-known index is the ASX 200, which consists of 200 of the largest companies listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. 
So the idea is instead of investing to a single company, you invest into many companies within one stock, which increases your diversification and historically reduces risk. A single company can go bankrupt and you can lose all the money you invested into that company. Whereas an index fund has multiple strong companies that can make up for any other underperforming companies. If you're interested to know how to invest in index funds, the easiest way is through an ETF and you can Google Australian index fund ETF and do your own research on which one would suit you best. By the way, fun fact, if you ever wondered the difference between shares and stocks, they do mean the same thing but should be used in different contexts. Stocks are a broad ownership of a company. So if you say I own stock in Woolworths, it tells people that you are invested in Woolworths stock and own a small portion of the company. Shares are the exact amount of ownership in a company. So if you say I own 10 shares of Woolworths, it tells people the exact number of units you have. So you wouldn't say I have 10 stocks of Woolworths, you'll say I have 10 shares of Woolworths. So now that you know that little fun fact, let's move on. By this point in the video, you may be a little bit confused and you may be wondering, why do people bother to invest instead of just saving all their money in the bank? Banks are safe, right? So why should you invest? So here's the thing. While saving your money is good in general, keeping it in a bank account for a long time is not the best idea. This is because of something called inflation. Inflation is a decrease in the purchasing power of your money over time, which is generally reflected in the increase in prices of goods and services in an economy. In simple terms, your money is depreciating in value over time. A Big Mac that costs $5 today may cost $7 in 10 years time. The inflation rate in Australia is about 2% per year. So by keeping your money in a bank account, you are losing money in the long term. In fact, I once saw this quote which really resonated with me. Cash is safe in the short term. Cash is risky in the long term. This is absolutely correct because in the short term, cash provides you with financial security, but if you hold on to cash for too long, you are losing money over time. You could also apply the same logic and say, investing is risky in the short term. Investing is safe in the long term. In the short term, the stock market is risky because it's unpredictable and prices go up and down depending on economic conditions. However, in the long term, the Australian stock market has always gone up. This is a fact. Now, both these quotes are not my opinion. They are actual facts backed by historical data. History has shown that both inflation and the stock market has gone up in the long term. Now, of course, it's very important to note that past performance is not an indicator of future results, but I think it is a good historical guide to keep in mind, and at least it's food for thought if you're still unsure about investing. Now that we've covered the essentials of the stock market, let's talk about what you need to do before you start your investing journey. You may be thinking, Brian, this video got me so pumped. I wanna start investing right now. Well, hold on there, champ. There are two very important things you need to tick off first. Number one, pay off all your high interest debt. This includes things like credit card debt, personal loans, and any other types of debt that are charging you a high interest rate. The purpose of investing is to maximize our profits, which is why you need to pay off those pesky debts that are accruing and sucking more money from you every month. The most common type of high interest debt is credit card debt, which usually has insanely high interest rates of up to 20%. Now to put this into context, the Australian stock market in general has historically returned 7-10% to on average per year over the last 100 years. This is considered a very good long-term return and in fact many professional stock pickers fail to beat this return over the long term. So paying off high interest debt is a better investment than investing in stocks because you are saving yourself up to 20% in interest by doing so. That is about double the return that the Australian stock market can likely offer you. Plus that 20% is a guaranteed return whereas the stock market has no guarantees at all. So it is an absolute no-brainer to pay this off. Personally, I would also pay off any debt that you have that is a higher interest rate than 7%. And the second very important thing to do is save up three to six months worth of emergency funds. This amount should be able to cover you and your family's expenses for three to six months if you were to ever lose your job or run into any unforeseen financial crisis. This is very important for a few reasons. The first reason is for financial security. The pandemic has shown us that our jobs are not safe and your primary source of income can disappear in a blink of an eye. Having an emergency fund in place helps you combat this risk. If you or your spouse suddenly lost your job, got into an accident, or just need a large amount of money at short notice, then you are covered. And this ties into the second reason, which is you should not invest money into the stock market that you cannot afford to lose or lose access to for at least 10 years. This is because the stock market does not always go up every year. And historically, there is always a period where it will crash. You do not want to be stuck in a situation where you have to sell your shares at a massive loss during a market downturn because you do not have an emergency fund and the only money you could raise is by selling your shares. You always want to have a cash buffer set aside. And the third reason is simply the psychological benefits of knowing you are covered in an emergency which puts less pressure on yourself at work and your life in general. Trust me, the quality of your life will improve if you have the insurance of knowing you'll be okay even if you get hit with some bad luck. So now that you've learned what the Australian stock market does and all the steps that you need to take, we are at the final step which is to buy your very first stock. And to do this, you need to sign up for an online brokerage account. 
In terms of which broker to use, these days we Aussies are spoiled with many good platforms with decent brokerage fees. Some popular platforms include Comsec, Selfwealth, Stake, Perla, and CMC Markets. I'll link a few videos and articles in the description below which you can check out. And from there you should be able to see the features that suit you, read some of the reviews, and decide which one is best for you. So I'd recommend to do some research, watch a few videos, read some articles, but don't stress too much on which one to pick. You can always transfer your shares to another broker if you don't like it. The most important thing is to educate yourself and start investing so you begin to develop these good financial habits and be on your way towards financial freedom. So there you have it folks, this is how the Australian stock market works and this is why you should consider investing to set yourself up for a better future. I hope this video has been helpful for you and if you enjoyed it, please give it a like so it can help more people. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more future content. In the meantime, you can check out these videos if you want to learn more about personal finance. And if you stuck around until the end, please comment good habits below so that I know who you are. I appreciate you and I hope you make a lot of money.